Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveringBands.com. And for everyone watching, for this video on my channel and help support the awesome bands I feature. And today I'm here with October Noir. How are you doing today? Doing good, man. It's great to have you. Yeah, it's good to be here. Looking forward to it. Yeah, and you want to uh, start off by uh, giving us a little history about the band and telling us how the uh, band came to be? Uh, yeah, so I started it back in uh, 2017. Um, I just put together a studio and uh, started laying some tracks out and figured it would flop and not go anywhere. And it was uh, kind of the opposite way around. So it worked out well for us. You know? I know we had a lot of people asking when we're going to play here, we're going to play here, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, fuck, I don't even have a band together, so let's get some people in. <laughs> and the rest is kind of history. I know we went through a phase with our original guitar player and keyboardist, uh, which are no longer around. It was uh, in differences. So, and then right around that time is when Doug uh, came in with Justin. Yeah, I, uh, I was actually filling in for another band around the area called uh, Dark Con of Man. Um, they, were, uh, they recently lost their guitarist, and I was filling in for them for their summer shows. And uh, we had a show at uh, Celtic Irish Pub, and that's where I met these guys. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I had my own band, which was like, a, it was, uh, it was a death metal band with like progressive elements that I was, uh, working on. You know, I had a bunch of stuff as far as, uh, projects and production and engineering stuff that I just wasn't able to do until I had a serious band. And that's, uh, when I met these guys, saw their sound, uh, met Tom, uh, saw everything that he was doing. I was like, you know what? It's going to be a lot more difficult for me to keep going the direction that I'm going, and I might as well bring what I'm doing and make his vision shine. Awesome. Now, you guys have a very close uh, sound to typo negative. I was wondering, is that intentional or unintentional? Uh, it, it was to an extent. I had a background when I was coming up. I was originally a guitar player. Um, a lot of what I learned and, and kind of pulled from was 80s uh, hair metal bands. So the Slaughter and Skid Row and Motley Crue, Def Leppard, all the big ones. Um, that's, that's kind of where I, I kind of taught myself to do things. But as I progressed into more of the writing processes, um, I would write things and I'd be like, oh, that's kind of like a typo feel to it, uh, which I always avoided. Um, but it was, it was one of those things where it kind of all kind of started rolling into place because when, when Peter Steele died, uh, that was it. That band was over. So seven years into it, I was like, fuck it. We'll, we'll see what happens. I'll put some stuff together. And if they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. I'll stop. Yeah. <laughs> no, it sounds uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how I feel about it, like since I joined the band, his typo negative influences were always way more than mine. Like uh, I like typo negative, but like not as much as I do these days. Um but like in order to facilitate writing for like this new album that we got coming out um i uh i was leaning like a lot more directly into it studying it really hardcore so that i can contribute these ideas that are uh in the sound but with my uh personal influences as a musician mm -hmm. and uh you know i feel like uh with this album um we really we're really meshing together a lot better you know, it's nice actually being able to uh, work on tracks together now. Yeah, it just it brings another level of, uh, I guess, the, the diversification to it. Because um, a, a lot of this, the early stuff was was kind of driven in that direction to for people to get. You know, sometimes you got to explain fucking everything to people. Uh, it seems like, but. Um, so it was kind of like, hey, this is the route, this is the direction. So as it mo motioned over into the second album, there was less of, of more song influences from Typo within the material. Uh, there was a couple that we had. There was one we, we put out, which was Her Dark Embrace. That one was uh, actually done to kind of piss off the Typo community to get their attention. It's, uh, it's hard enough getting people to click a link. I mean, I'm sure you go through that, you know, dealing with your own channel. Um, so, yeah, that, that worked. <laughs> but coming into the third album... We were looking at it from a perspective, okay, let, let's write, let's let's dig in real internal and real deep and just kind of come up with our own uh, plateau of, of material that was really written from the depths. So it's it's um, it's the same, but it's all, it's different as well. So I'm sure we'll have comparisons, but we'll go from there. 
And can you give us uh, any more details about the uh, new album, maybe the release, uh, how far along you are into it? Yeah, September 22nd. Um, I think we're, what, maybe about 90% done with it. So, yeah, we're getting close. Yeah, it's 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 almost there, man. we got a few little things to button up. Uh, we've got uh, Paul Bento from Wicked Wind Music, who's uh, doing a lot of the production on it. That's why I was in Chicago with him at, in the studio. Um, so it, it's really starting to come together now to where we're, we're on the finishing legs with it. So probably by next month, we should, should have it all ready. Awesome. Uh, you've done a lot of awesome covers like Cry Little Sister. And do you have any more covers planned in the future? Yeah, normally what we try and do is, is make those more of a buffer room thing. Um, you know, I like doing covers, uh, so we like to put them out on the in-between from the, from the albums itself. Mm -hmm. um, I know we, we've really plucked around with some stuff. Was it uh, Stripped from Depeche Mode? Yeah, looking, looking forward at, to working on that one. Yeah, and there was some ideas for uh, like Crimson and Clover, which is an old song. Um, but then also rolling Michael into... Michael Jackson's given to me. Yeah, no, we... <laughs> Justin <laughs> really wants yeah, to do that yet. one. <laughs> no, Michael Jackson. <laughs> not well, not yet, anyway. But um, that and what was it, uh, The Passions, they had a song called uh, In Love with the German Film Star. So we're looking at that. So just I like to pull from the older stuff. Uh, covers can be tricky because there's, there's a level of making them your own uh, that is important. So it could be a little bit more difficult. And any plans to play live coming up? Yeah, we're, right now we're kind of on a, a small break uh, just to get this album stuff taken care of. Thank goodness. Yeah, I know we were we mm. hit <laughs> it pretty hard for <laughs> the past several months. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we should be back. We're looking at getting back into Club LA and Destin uh, with the Rob Zombie tribute band, I believe, in September. So. We're trying to hold out until then. Awesome. When do you plan to release your uh, next single? Uh, that one will actually be out in August. So we're, we're going to give it a month's time to promote and, and push the new album and try and get it out there. Yeah, that one's actually coming out with a music video. Yeah, that'll be attached to it. Awesome. Can you tell us the name of that track? Uh, it's called Windows. So it's kind of the, the uh, flagship model for the album. So it'll be you know, roughly the first song that's on the album so far. So hopefully pull everybody in as needed. <laughs> well, what, what, made you, off. <laughs> what made you pick that song as your first lead single? So usually when I'm doing tracks, um, I can kind of give an overall perspective or view on the sound of particular ones, something that's a little bit more mainstream. Uh, I know with the first album, you know, like I said, Volatile, it's going to be the one. That'll be the one people gravitate to the most. And it, it was correct. Uh, same thing happened with the second album with Spellbound. And then coming into the third album with all the material laid out in front of me, it's like, yeah, that, that's going to be the one that people are going to gravitate to. So there's other ones that are, that are really good that are that are in close positioning with it. But, um, yeah, I think this mm -hmm. one's going to take And the G, definitely. Well, not only, but you got reverence, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, we got, we got some one. real standout tracks and some yeah. that really suck. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it'll make it worth it for the standout tracks. Yeah. Give more attention. Now, if people want to find you online on social media, get your music, how do they do that? Um, so physical copies, T-shirts, and all the main merchandise and whatnots at uh, www.octobernoir.org. Uh, and then our Facebook's our main channel where we kind of push the feed through, uh, which is at October Noir Music. And then uh, we've got the uh, Instagram account as well, which is at October Noir. And how did you guys come up with the name October Noir to begin with? So for me, uh, Halloween was always my favorite season. Uh, of course, the month of October was always the best. Uh, big fan of the fall. So I wanted something that, that kind of diverse. And, and pushed into um, an atmospheric setting that could paint a picture in one's mind just by the name itself. So uh, Noir being French, uh, just had a nice little roll off in that. So it, it, it kind of translates to autumn black. So we want to keep that kind of dark theme um, and, and play in that pool of things. Because a lot of this music, you know, people are going to listen to more so in the fall and around Halloween time anyway. So just kind of make it all encompassing, just basic. Cool. I want to ask, with the uh, new uh, album you're working on, did the pandemic kind of influence that at all? Um, it gave us time, but I know 
the pandemic time was uh, when we we kind of shut down. I think we had like what five months. Yeah, something like five that. Five months. Yeah, we invested into uh, doing our own lighting and sound. We mm -hmm. just played a, a, a pretty big show for our area, and they fucked us <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we were like, we're not gonna let that happen. So. But that uh, that sent us down a rabbit hole of uh, what can we do to uh, take all of the opportunity for anyone else to fuck us at a show and give ourselves the power to fuck up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was working on something called a silent stage rig. Um, basically, finding a way to make all of the audio inputs chain to our own mixer that's already pre-configured make it uh, deployable in a, uh, in a package that's as pre-set up as possible, um, find a way to make the light show um, go in an automated fashion to where like we can, we can just record it like, a, like it's a regular performance and then we get backing tracks and click tracks playing along with that. Uh, we got the in-ear monitors that are uh, going out of it as well. Um, but everything is really self-contained and um, designed so that we can, just the four of us in the band, pull it out, throw it on stage, and have a professional, um, professional great experience no matter where we play. Because it's like, you know, you really want to grab people in the grassroots thing, even those small shows you want to bring your A-game. And that's what made us want to get that, uh, that lighting show. Yeah. But uh, shout-outs to Perseus. Uh, I believe they're <laughs> Oklahoma City. They're the first people I saw that had their setup. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't quite as sophisticated as ours. I saw a bunch of problems with it that I fixed when engineering our stuff, but they're the ones that really uh, showed me that that's uh, the direction we need to go as far as building our spectacle. So while Doug, Doug was playing uh, Stephen Hawkins, I was I was working on some of the newer material. So <laughs> I was working on it with you, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to ask, uh, what uh, genre do you classify yourself as? Because there's so many different elements in there. There's like rock, metal, goth. There's so much going on. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny, man, because uh, one of the new new tracks is pulling more of a 60s, 30s and 40s doo-wop style um, kind of sound to it, but just incorporating into the core projection of, of what the band is sound-wise or sonically. Um, so normally if people ask, I just say goth rock, you know, I try to keep it. As simplistic as possible, but yeah, there are a lot of different elements. Just barely delve into metal these days. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in the well, it's, uh, it's a lot softer. When you guys uh, hit the road, do you have any artists you'd like to uh, play with? Oh uh, man, I know we had uh, well, the the Ozzy tribute band was they were they were really good dudes. Yeah. Man. They were fun, but it's it's a lot harder to get into the, the actual mainstream bands and getting shows because normally their labels have everything set up for them uh, and the management handles it. So a lot about what we do, it, you know, we're getting into this whole played along with tribute band stuff, it seems like. But uh, it's mainly other local bands um, that are within the areas and some of them will call us up and say, hey, you want to show here, show there? Yeah, sure. Um so we're working on it, man. We're trying to build it up to where we just obtain more of these venues and, and maybe hopefully have a band that's in need of someone and they can call us up and say, hey, come open for this, the big ones. So. <laughs> I guess it's just keeping the momentum going, getting the name out, and then see where it goes, right? That's that's the main thing, man. Uh, PR work is, is the big thing behind it, too. So Yeah, yeah I know it's... Uh... It's not the most feasible thing in the world, but I'd uh, I'd really like to tour with the guys from Ashes Fallen. Um, they uh, they're a like a, a gothic rock um, band that's out in Northern California, and they're a guitarist and vocalist James Perry. I've recently become really good friends with them, so shout out to those guys. I would really love to tour with them one day. Uh, they uh, they just put out an album that got um, front page of Bandcamp. Uh, on World Goth Day, so that was that was really cool. That's those guys are killing thing. it, yeah. and they're really good people. But those would be my top pick for like a for like a band that I'd want to tour with, just for personal reasons, because I think they'd be fun people on the road. Awesome. Well, I look forward to what you guys are coming up in the future, and it was good talking with you. And everybody, look them up. <laughs> yeah, look us up. <laughs> Come spend your money.
<laughs> we'll take all of it. <laughs> and for everyone watching, I've linked their music in the video description, so check that out. <laughs>